Welcome to Crime and Sacrifice. My name is Brianna, and this is episode 13, Captain Tammy Jo Schultz. On April 17, 2018, Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 departed from LaGuardia Airport in New York City on its way to Dallas, Texas, with 149 people on board. It was a routine flight path for the Dallas-based crew. At 11.03 a.m., about 20 minutes after takeoff, everything was going as expected, with the aircraft traveling at an altitude of 32,000 feet and climbing. First Officer Darren Ellisor, 44, was piloting the aircraft with the captain, 56-year-old Tammy Jo Schultz, supervising. Without warning, there was a loud bang and the cabin began to decompress as the entire aircraft vibrated from engine number one. Both pilots immediately grabbed the controls of the aircraft and put on their oxygen masks, working to correct the plane, which was now rapidly descending. At first, Captain Schultz thought they may have hit another aircraft, though it soon became clear that engine number one had been disabled completely. Though the two of them didn't know it at the time, not only did the engine fail, but pieces of its fan blade and the cowling broke off suddenly and hit the left wing of the plane. The debris struck one of the passenger windows with such force that it shattered, tearing a hole in the cabin. This resulted in a sudden loss of air pressure as the aircraft continued to plummet and the passenger seated where the window had exploded away from the plane started to get sucked out of the aircraft. Horrified passengers nearby leapt into action, trying desperately to hold on to her, to pull her back in. But with the incredible amounts of force at work, they were unable to do so. And she was stuck with half of her body out of the plane and half in, her seatbelt one of the only things keeping her inside the plane. For anybody that has reservations about flying, or indeed anybody who has flown in general, this is a true nightmare. Oxygen masks began falling from the ceiling as panic-stricken passengers tried to sign up for the on-flight Wi-Fi just to be able to leave goodbye messages for loved ones. And yet, in the cockpit of the plane, the mood was very different as Captain Tammy Jo Schultz and First Officer Darren Ellisor remained calm and slipped into a kind of laser focus, determined to land their plane just as years of extensive training had taught them to do in an emergency like this. A female pilot in a field still completely dominated by men, Tammy Jo Schultz had always been a bit of a trailblazer. Growing up in New Mexico, she had thrilled at watching Air Force planes as they flew over her family's ranch, and determined that she would do whatever she could to fly. When her high school had a vocational training day intended to give students an idea of a possible future career in the 1970s, Tammy Jo attended a lecture by a retired Air Force colonel. She was the only woman in attendance. In fact, the colonel asked her if she was lost. She said that she was not, that she was there because she wanted to fly one day. She was mortified when he told her, along with the rest of the class, that there were no female professional pilots. But still, he allowed her to stay for the entire lecture. The experience was very disheartening for Schultz, and she ended up telling herself that she was being unrealistic, resigning herself to a more practical career as she began college. It wasn't until her junior year that she met another young woman who had just received her Air Force wings. That was all of the push that Tammy Jo needed. It was possible, and Schultz decided then that she would find a way. Even when the Air Force denied her application, Schultz was now determined and visited a Navy recruiter, who eventually agreed to process her application. Then she buzzed off all her hair, G.I. Jane style, according to her, and headed to flight training in Pensacola, Florida. It was in the mid-1980s when Schultz finally received her pilot's wings and became one of the first female fighter pilots in U.S. Navy history. During her time there, Captain Schultz was known for her skill as a pilot and learned how to fly many different aircraft over the course of her career, becoming an instructor herself as early as 1991. During Operation Desert Storm, 
Captain Schultz was prevented from going on combat missions due to Navy regulations at the time, but helped in training for several vital missions for the male combat pilots who could fight. Throughout her military service, Captain Schultz received two Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medals and a National Defense Service Medal. She was promoted to Lieutenant Commander in 1995. Soon afterward, she married another naval aviator named Dean Schultz, and the two eventually retired from the Navy to become commercial pilots for Southwest Airlines. In the intervening years, they raised two children and became fixtures in their Texas community, active in their local church, helping at-risk youth, and temporarily turning their home into a shelter for victims in the aftermath of Hurricane Rita. In 2018, Captain Tammy Jo Schultz wasn't even scheduled to be flying Flight 1380, but had swapped shifts with her husband, Dean, so she could attend her son's track meet, expecting just another routine flight. And now here she was, captain of this disabled plane, with the safety of every life on the plane ultimately her responsibility. But her initial thought upon realizing that something had gone wrong, that one of the engines was completely disabled, was that this reminded her of a particular training she had done in the Navy, and she and Darren both felt confident that they knew what to do. At first, the noise in the cockpit was so loud that the two could only communicate with hand signals. They knew that they would need to make an emergency landing as soon as possible. Captain Schultz determined that their best bet was to try to land in Philadelphia as she took over main controls from First Officer Ellisor. Both showed remarkable calm as they went to work, communicating with air traffic control throughout, Tammy handling the flying and some of the communication with ground control, and Darren handling all of the other tasks required in the cockpit. Back in the cabin, as the plane repressurized, passengers were able to pull the woman who had been partially sucked out of the plane back in, 43-year-old Jennifer Reardon. Flight attendants and other passengers, including a nurse and a first responder, began trying desperately to resuscitate Jennifer and perform CPR. Many others on the flight tried to send messages to their loved ones, saying goodbye. Others could do little more than pray. In the cockpit, Captain Schultz and First Officer Ellisor had to rely on their creativity and flexibility in deciding how to land. They had been in contact with air traffic control in Philadelphia, but the plane was not in a condition for them to make a conventional landing. I don't understand the mechanics exactly that went into landing safely, but Captain Schultz had to make a number of calls, including the timing of extending the flaps and landing gear despite the flight being 10,000 pounds overweight for landing. But in the end, she was able to land safely and avoid blowing out the tires, despite the fact that they landed at a faster speed than is ideal. When the plane finally came to a stop, Tammy made her way through the cabin, hugging and embracing passengers in a show of unguarded humanity. When one passenger asked to shake the hand of the man who landed the plane, she informed him that she was the captain of the aircraft, that she had landed it herself. And they hugged after sharing a surprised laugh. Tammy and the flight attendants also ensured speedy medical attention for Jennifer Reardon, though it was too late. She did not survive her injuries and was pronounced dead at the hospital from blunt impact trauma to her head, neck, and torso. She was a mother of two, a business executive whose husband had been waiting for her to get back home that day so she could attend her son's baseball game, not so different than Tammy. At a service celebrating her life, hundreds attended and mourned the loss of a woman overwhelmingly described as a loving role model and beautiful soul. Seven other passengers were treated for minor injuries, and the rest of the 149 people on board walked away from the incident with no injuries at all. An inquiry into the incident ruled out any pilot error and reported instead that it was the result of a fluke accident and faulty equipment that might require a redesign. In later interviews, it's clear that Captain Schultz and First Officer Ellisor do not consider themselves heroes for what they did that day. To them, this was what they were trained to do, and they were merely doing their jobs. Captain Schultz has said that she never doubted she would be able to land the plane. Telling ABC News 2020, as long as you have altitude and ideas, you're okay. And we had both. 
She and Darren Ellisor instead praised the heroics shown by passengers of the flight in doing all they could to try to save Jennifer Reardon, many showing incredible strength of character despite never having trained for a situation like that. However, many of the people on the flight that day have praised both pilots as heroes for the calmness they showed and the care they offered to all involved in the immediate aftermath. Being a pilot requires a certain degree of courage and decisiveness, especially in situations like this. Captain Tammy Jo Schultz and First Officer Darren Ellisor showed that courage when it was needed most. In the months following the incident, both pilots were invited to the White House to be honored, alongside many of the passengers from that day, bound by their shared experience and now part of each other's lives. Also, another heroic pilot, Captain Sully, has been in touch with them to help them navigate life in the spotlight and in the aftermath of such an incident. Both pilots continue flying for Southwest without reservation. Captain Schultz has since written a book about her life and this incident in particular called Nerves of Steel, which I believe is something one of the paramedics said to her on the ground after taking her heart rate immediately following the incident. The book was released in fall of 2019, and is available at CaptainSchultz.com. And for those wondering what went wrong with the flight, it looks like it was some kind of mechanical failure, that one of the titanium engine blades had cracks in it invisible to the human eye. I believe Southwest has since gotten to work inspecting all of its planes and replacing any that were faulty. Still, it's a comfort to know that there are pilots out there like Captain Tammy Jo Schultz and First Officer Darren Ellisor. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening to the Crime and Sacrifice podcast. What kind of person will you choose to be?